The funnel-web spiders that form the family Atracidae are arguably the most feared group of spiders on the planet. And initially at least, this seems to be perfectly understandable. Armed with a pair of colossal fangs backed with a virulent venom, and a rather foreboding appearance to boot, it is no surprise that these spiders have an almost legendary reputation in Australia. But like with many of the world's most feared animals, myths and misconceptions weave their way into the public's knowledge about them. And in the case of funnel webs, many of the things that you may fear the most about them may turn out to be nothing more than old wives' tales. So without further ado, let us take a look at five of the most commonly believed myths about funnel web spiders, and why they are wrong. First and foremost is the widespread belief that funnel web spiders are aggressive and will chase you down. As I have emphasised time and time again in my various funnel web videos, these spiders' athletic capabilities leave something to be desired, and that is putting it nicely. As you should be able to see from this video, a funnel web's climbing skills are nothing short of atrocious, and their running capabilities are not far behind. And don't even ask about their jumping capability, it simply doesn't exist. Oh, and also their eyesight is absolutely crap. So why are these spiders so utterly useless in the athletics department? Well, the key to that lies in their lifestyle. You see, funnel webs are ambush predators, and instead of going out after their prey, they wait for their food to come to them. They reside in webbed burrows surrounded by radiating trip lines that pick up vibrations from prey moving around outside and carry them back to the spider. Since the spider only has to move a short distance in order to tackle its prey, mobility and sustained speed are not important for their success as hunters. But the real nail in the coffin for the stories about funnel webs chasing people is their sensory capabilities. As aforementioned, funnel web spiders have very poor eyesight, and that is courtesy of the fact that their eyes are very small and simple, capable of doing little more than differentiating between light and dark. Now let us compare that to some other types of spider that do engage in active pursuit. These include wolf spiders, jumping spiders, and wandering spiders. Each of the three spiders that I just mentioned have large, forward-facing eyes. These are very important for chasing things down, as they allow an animal to more accurately judge the distance between them and their prey. But of course, eyesight is not the only means by which an animal can perceive the world around itself. And with funnel webs, it is all about vibration. Funnel webs are incredibly sensitive to vibrations transferred to them by their silken trip lines, and they can detect the movement and direction of prey from quite an impressive distance. But there is a catch. In order to do so, they need to be in contact with their web. Away from its web, a funnel web sensors are incredibly compromised. So don't worry about being charged at by that funnel web wandering around on your front porch. It probably doesn't even know you're there. But if funnel webs aren't aggressive, then why are they so reluctant to back down when provoked? Again, the answer to that most likely links to their lifestyle. Most notably to what I said before about them not being the most mobile of animals. If one decides to mess with a funnel web out in the open, then chances are they will be greeted by the spider's spectacular threat display, where it will rear up, raising its front legs and exposing its fangs. This pose, while admittedly rather intimidating, is not an act of aggression. It is a form of self-defense, more specifically an instance of diamatic behavior which encompasses any action performed by an animal for the purpose of startling or intimidating a potential predator. 
A funnel web spider caught out in the open is particularly prone to doing this, most likely because their inability to run fast over any significant length of time means that if they were to flee, then chances are whatever is pursuing them would catch up sooner rather than later. And as one would expect if that were to be true, the behaviour of these spiders when in or near their burrows could not be more different. Rather than standing their ground and rearing up, they will almost always opt to flee deep into their burrows. So in a bizarre twist, while funnel webs may be very well known for being rather bad tempered at times, when in their natural home sites they are in fact very timid animals. So now let's move on to the next myth, which is that in the absence of adequate medical treatment, bites by funnel web spiders are almost always deadly. Many people seem to be under the impression that if you aren't able to make it to the hospital within 15 minutes of getting bitten by a funnel web, then you will be, um, committing despawn. But thankfully, reality isn't quite as frightening. Shown here is a review of a large number of reliably documented bites by several different funnel web species, published in 2005. One of the objectives of this study was to estimate the rates of severe envenomations inflicted by each of the funnel web species identified. In other words, the percentage of documented bites that caused symptoms classed as severe. Not all of the funnel web species investigated had instances of severe envenomation attributed to them. In fact, only six of them did. These were Atrax robustus, the Sydney funnel web, Hadronici formidabilis, the northern tree funnel web, Hadronici cerberia, the southern tree funnel web, Hadronici infensa, the Toowoomba funnel web, Hadronici species 14, which is now known as Hadronici macquariensis, the Port Macquarie funnel web, and Hadronici versuta, the Blue Mountains funnel web. As you should be able to see quite clearly, four out of the six species, including the notorious Sydney funnel web, caused severe envenomation symptoms in only a minority of recorded cases. The only two species that did cause severe symptoms in the majority of cases, Hadronici formidabilis and Hadronici cerberia, are both tree-dwelling funnel webs that have rather out-of-the-way distributions, so one would be pretty unlikely to encounter, let alone get bitten by, either of them. It is also possible, perhaps indeed even plausible, that the true rates of severe envenomation for those species may be even lower, because a bite that caused severe symptoms is a more noteworthy occurrence and, as a result, probably more likely to be recorded than the alternative. As such, there may be a recording bias in favour of cases that caused severe symptoms. Now that being said, none of this suggests that you should be complacent about getting bitten by a funnel web. If you suspect that a funnel web has envenomated you, then seek medical attention immediately. So two down, three to go. Our next myth is that funnel web spiders are spreading from Sydney. This misconception doesn't seem to be quite as widely believed as the last two we looked at. That being said, I still have heard it a fair few times. Now, I can only speculate, but I do think I have a pretty good idea as to how this misconception came to be. Due to the sheer amount of publicity received by Atrax Robustus, the Sydney funnel web, many people are completely unaware of the existence of all the other species of funnel web. Consequently, they get placed under the impression that funnel web spiders are or were restricted to Sydney. And in the event that they hear about funnel webs being recorded well outside of Sydney, then a plausible explanation seems to be that they are spreading. This, of course, is a mistake, likely resulting from a general lack of knowledge of just how widespread and diverse the funnel webs are, especially the genus Hadronici. So that's that, but before we move on to the next myth, 
let us discuss the sheer implausibility of funnel-web spiders spreading so far and wide in a short space of time. As I mentioned earlier on in this video, funnel-web spiders are essentially the couch potatoes of the spider world. They really don't like to move around. And this applies to them at all stages of life. Well, except for mature males, but they're on their last legs anyway. This, combined with the fact that baby funnel webs are incapable of transporting themselves via ballooning, like many of the more derived spiders are capable of, means that the dispersal of offspring from their parents' locations is very limited. So funnel webs often tend to occur in small, dense populations clumped in areas of suitable habitat. They are also heavily dependent on moisture, as they desiccate quite easily, and this further restricts their ability to disperse, resulting in many funnel web populations being rather localised. Even for the more widespread species such as Hadronici infensa, the areas within their range that they actually occupy are quite small and scattered. These are not spiders that are going to manage to spread all the way from Sydney with any degree of rapidity at all. And moving on, the next mistaken belief we're going to be taking a look at is the one about funnel web spiders allegedly playing dead at the bottom of swimming pools. Now it is definitely true that wandering mature male funnel web spiders do occasionally fall into swimming pools. And as an unfortunate consequence of their abysmal climbing skills, they tend not to be able to get themselves out again. Eventually the spiders sink to the bottom of the pool, where they may lie seemingly dead for a considerable period of time, and can rapidly resume activity once removed from the water. So I am not denying the occurrence of this phenomenon whatsoever, nor the less than pleasant surprises that may accompany it. The issue here lies in the misuse of the term playing dead. Playing dead is a very effective means of defending oneself against predators, and is widely utilised by an all manner of animals. However, unlike what is happening to the funnel webs that end up in people's swimming pools, feigning death, or to use the technical term thanatosis, is a completely voluntary action, most often used as aforementioned to escape the attention of a predator. Needless to say, funnel web spiders falling into swimming pools and failing to find a way out again are not acting voluntarily whatsoever. Finishing off the list is the myth that funnel web spiders all have funnel shaped webs. That's right, even the name itself is a myth. Make no mistake, there are funnel web spiders that spin distinctively funnel shaped webs. Hadronici versuta comes to mind. But as I have already alluded to, the funnel webs are far more diverse than most people appreciate. For example, many of the arboreal, in other words tree-dwelling funnel webs, construct rather complex webs with numerous entrances pointing out in multiple directions. Now I don't know what word I'd use to describe this thing, but funnel is definitely not the first word that would come into my mind. Another example worthy of a feature is a strange little funnel web called Hadronici nimula. You would be forgiven for assuming that this exceptionally chunky atracid is actually a mouse spider, and its parallels to the mouse spiders run deeper than its appearance. Its burrow structure is rather similar, with limited use of webbing and a rudimentary flap-like trapdoor at the entrance. Some funnel webs, however, are even more minimalistic in their usage of webbing. This is Hadronici meridiana, a rather small atracid found in Victoria. And this is its burrow. Very little webbing and nothing that looks remotely like a funnel. 
those represent only a fraction of the examples out there. But I'm sure they're enough for you to get the point. Not all funnel webs have funnel shaped webs. And that just about brings this video to a close. It did turn out a whole lot longer than I anticipated it would, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. So thank you all very much for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, then feel free to check out some of my other uploads and don't forget to subscribe. And by all means, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. I am always keen for more feedback. So until next time, farewell.